So, chapter 10.7, we're going to talk about complex numbers. I hope you're about done with radicals because this section is going to wrap up our radicals for us. This section answers one question. And the question is, is the square root of negative 9 possible? Notice we're not going to talk about cube roots or fourth roots anymore. We're going to talk only about square roots. The question is, is the square root of negative 9 possible? What's the answer? You know what? Actually, you, you can't answer that right now because it's a trick question. You ready? Yes. It's a trick question. And the reason why it's a trick question is because if I ask you, is it, is it possible in the real numbers, the answer is no. Because you can't think of a number times itself that gives you negative 9. Can you? No. If you can't, you're a smarter person than I am. Uh, no, you can't. There, there's nothing that exists. You take 3 times 3, you get 9. Negative 3 times negative 3, you get 9. This isn't possible in the real numbers. <clears throat> However, I'm going to introduce to you today a new set of numbers. You're excited, right? <laughs> of course you are. What these things are, are called imaginary numbers. Now, i got to clarify something. They're not called imaginary because they don't actually exist. They're called imaginary because they're like the opposite of real numbers. Do you get me? So real numbers are the group of numbers. Imaginary numbers are a different set of numbers. They're still there. In fact, if you don't know imaginary numbers, you're never going to be an engineer. A lot of engineering principles, the stuff that holds buildings up, is based on imaginary numbers. It's really interesting stuff. So we're going to talk today about imaginary numbers, and that's going to lead us into complex numbers. Here's a whole definition of an imaginary number. What we're going to be dealing with, there's only one thing we've got to fix here. You see, the, the square root of negative 9 is impossible because there's a negative inside of it. The 9's just fine, right? You can find the square root of 9. What we can't do is find the square root of the negative. There's really only one more thing we have to define in order to deal with this problem. And what that is, is the square root of negative 1. That's the only thing we have to fix. I know it's surprising. You're like, wait, wait a second. There's a whole other lot of square roots besides negative 1. Well, we're going to talk about those in just a bit. Right now, we just, we just have to find one thing. It's a square root of negative 1, and we're going to define that as a number. As the number, this will seem weird, all right? We're defining this as the number i. He might think, wait a second, Mr. Leonard, I know I failed English, but uh, I'm pretty sure I's a letter. Pretty sure that I's a letter. Here's what I, I need to distinguish for you. I is the square root of negative 1. I is not a variable. You can't plug anything in for I. It doesn't have a changing value. How much is I? Don't say negative 1. It's not negative 1. What, how much is I? The square root of negative 1. If you say negative 1, you've got it wrong. How much is i? Everybody, how much is i? Square root of negative 1. Good. It's a square root of negative 1. Every time you see this, it means this. Every time you see this, it means this. These things are interchangeable. They are the same exact value. The square root of negative 1 is i. Now, if you plug in the square root of negative 1 in your calculator, you know what it's going to give you? Error. Error. <laughs> You're breaking me. Stop hurting me. Yeah, yeah of course. It, it's not going to work because... Your calculator can't distinguish that. Your calculator doesn't know what I means unless you have a real fancy calculator. Uh, it's not going to do that for you. You have to know that the square root of negative 1 is I. So the two things we, we're, we need to memorize for this section. Firstly, I equals the square root of negative 1. The next one is just as important. Hey, this is an equation, right? Say yes. Yes. And you know that with an equation, if I do something to both sides, it's still equal. What would happen if I take both sides to the second power? So for instance, if I square this side and square this side, this side becomes I squared. Follow? Mm -hmm. If you square a square root, what happens? So how much is I squared? Negative one. one. That's why I can't ask you, how much is i? And you tell me negative 1. 
How much is i? It's not negative 1 because i squared is negative 1. You can't have the same thing, right? You go, i is negative 1, and i squared is negative 1. Well, something's going on in your head that's not quite right, all right? That, that's not happening. <laughs> so what we need to know on this stuff is that i is the square root of negative 1, i squared is negative 1. This you must memorize. Now, I know a lot of people walk in late, absolutely unacceptable, by the way, uh, but you need to memorize that and focus on this right now, okay? That's what you have to have down. This right here, this i, that's called an imaginary number. What this lets us do is lets us write any square root of a negative as something that's meaningful. This lets us rewrite negative, uh, square roots of negative numbers. So it only works for square, square roots? Well, you don't need it for cube roots. Mm, sure. Fourth roots you can break down into square roots. So yeah, it only works for square roots. This lets us rewrite the square roots of negative numbers. Would you like to find out how it's done? Yes. yes. Right now. <laughs> Forget about it. Done. Let's go home. Let's look at the square root of negative 9, alright? Alright. Is this possible? Well, that's, again, that's a trick question. If I say, is it possible in the real numbers, you say no. That's why we wrote no real solution. Remember all those times we wrote no real solution? Not just no solution, because there is a solution. We're going to find it out using our complex or imaginary numbers. Complex numbers we'll deal with in just a bit. Okay, right now we're just in the imaginary zone. Here's what you need to do whenever you have... That was pretty quick, wasn't it? That's right. Don't swear this one. Okay, here's what you need to do whenever you get the square root of a negative number. What we're trying to do is we're trying to break off a negative 1. Watch what I'm going to do on this problem. Do you agree with me that the square root of negative 9 is the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times 9? Yep. True statement? Yeah. Absolutely mathematically true. Now, according to the product rule, we should be able to separate those things. True? Mm -hmm. Should be able to separate them. True? True. True. That's true. Remember, we've done this before, right? Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Can you tell me how much is the square root of 9? Three. Three. Look what happened. As soon as we broke off the negative 1, this changes into the square root that I can deal with, can't, can't you? No matter what number that is, as long as it's not negative, you can deal with that. You can simplify it. You can take the square root of it if it's a perfect square. In any case, that is a, how much? That's 3. Now the question is, do you remember what the square root of negative 1 is? It's on the board. But do you remember? Every time you see the square root of negative 1, you're going to write what? I. Do you have to write the square root of i? No. No, this is the definition. The square root of negative 1 is i. So this is that. This is 3. This is i. Now, we rarely write it I3. Right? That would be a freeway, like I5, okay? We don't want to do that. We're going to write it backwards. It's kind of like a variable. It's not a variable. It's not a variable. I is the square root of negative 1. But we're going we're to write it 3i, because we're more familiar with that. So we're going to write 3i. That means, what's that mean? What's, what's i again, everybody? Three. Square root of negative 1. Square, is it negative 1? No, square root of negative 1. Square root of negative 1. So is this equal to negative 3? No. Definitely not. This is square root of negative 1, which you don't even know how to do that, right? I mean, it's not something that we can quantify in a real number. I is I. I is the square root of negative 1. It's not something you can plug in a calculator and get something out of. You can't do it. It's not real. It's not a real number. Does it exist? Yes. Is it real? <laughs> it's not in the real numbers. It is real. It's on the board. Philosophy. Not philosophy. <laughs> Okay, we're going to try a few more here, really get the hang of this stuff. 
In every single case, what we're trying to do is break off a negative 1 because right now we have a, square, a negative inside of a square root. We know that a negative inside of a square root is not possible in the real numbers. So instead of the square root of negative 25, can you tell me what I'm going to write that as? 25 times negative 1. Or we could do negative 1 times 25. Either one. It doesn't really matter. It is commutative after all. That's a true statement, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now what the product rule says is I can split this up as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. And in doing so, I change that 25 from a positive, I'm sorry, from a negative into a positive, something I can deal with. Well, we, what we also know is the square root of negative 1, that's something as well. It's something we've, we've defined over here. It's a definition. It is what it is. So in our problem here, how much is the square root of negative 1, folks? I. Every time you see that, what are you going to put? I. And how much is the square root of 25? I. It's really our free way. <laughs> We're not going to put I, I times 5. We're going to put... Five i. This value you can represent as five i. We break off the negative. The square root of negative one is i. The square root of anything else, well, we can deal with that as soon as we remove that negative. How about the square root of negative three? Let's try that. Square root of negative three. Well, let's try the same process here. If you have the square root of negative 3, the first thing you might want to do is break that up as negative 1 times 3. Are you noticing how I'm just breaking off that negative? That's all I'm doing. Now, if you're with me on that. Mm -hmm. Just breaking off the negative. And then, of course, we do have to separate that. Square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Same exact steps as before. What's the square root of negative 1, ladies and gentlemen? I. Okay, so this is I. What's the square root of 3? You can't simplify. Okay, you can't simplify. You can't do anything with it. So what do you do? Just leave it. Done. Can't do anything with that. Square root of 3 is the square root of 3. It's not like square root of 25 where you can actually simplify that. This one, square root of 3, it's already simplified. There's no perfect squares to divide that. It's i root of 3. You're done. Now, you're, you're probably wondering, wait a second. Here the I came second, here the I came second, here the I is coming first. What's the deal? Well, just like with variables, uh, just like with, with variables, when you did this, you probably wouldn't write square root of 3x. You know why? Because a lot of people, a lot of you, uh, end up making your, your roots a little bit longer, a little bit longer, and a little bit longer, and pretty soon it covers the whole entire problem. Have you noticed some of you, you doing that? I've noticed it, because <laughs> I grade your homework. Sometimes it happens, and all of a sudden your x is including your root when it's not supposed to be. If we write the x out front, you'll never have a problem with that. Same thing's going to happen here. If you wrote your i in the back, some of you are going to cover that i and forget that it's not actually inside the root. Okay, you're rarely going to have an i inside of a root. Rarely happens. We write the i out, in, out front. i root 3 is appropriate. That way we don't confuse the i as being inside the radicand. It's part of the radicand. Do you understand why we do that? Mm -hmm. Here it's not a big deal. 5i, there's no radical to confuse that with. Here we, we have that. So we're going to write the i in front of our radicals. Let's do one more. I'll give you a few to do on your own. Let's try. Oh my, negative square root of negative 50. There's one for you. Hey, first question. First question is this. Does a negative times a negative equal a positive in this case? No. That would be like multiplying a whole number inside